because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with Aston Brown. Aston, both of us are very good mates with Josh Taylor. Both of us have trained yeah. alongside Josh uh, as well. We've known him since he was a, a young kid coming through the ranks as well. Um, we spoke a little bit before I pushed record there. Your initial sort of like emotions and reaction to the fight last night? Just gutted, mate. I'm just gutted. Gutted for a man. You know what I mean? I fucking I feel I feel on a down the day, mate. You know what I mean? But as long as he's okay, mate. You know what I mean? I know he's got his family, his wife over there, a good team and a bit on mate, and he'll be Josh. He'll, he'll be all right, mate. He'll be he'll be devastated. I know Josh. You know what I mean? He's very hard on himself, mate. But I think it's time for him to go up to one four seven, mate, and 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 be a world champion at that weight, mate. I think he's he's went to the well too many times at one forty, and I think it showed a, a wee bit last night. You know, he made the weight great and all that. It looked great, mate, but that's not a full story. You know what I mean? It, that's not a full story. So I think it's time for him to move up, mate, and uh, some of the challenges there for him. You mentioned the weight, and it's interesting that. When you see fighters get on, not, I don't want to say Josh is old, but 32 years old, as fighters progress mm -hmm. throughout their career, they, they, they move up in weight. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Terry Crawford, a prime example. Started at lightweight, light welter, now up at welter now. Do, do you feel as, like I said in my podcast, I don't have a podcast, I filmed my podcast earlier today, and I said in my podcast, I, I, I feel like maybe Josh has had one too many fights at 140. Um, and if you look at Josh, the way he fights, he's he's on his toes, he's in and out, pop, 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 hand speed, pop, 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 pop. and I think we've, we've, we've not saw that in his last two fights. And do, do you sort of agree with that? 100%, mate, 100%. I think it is. He's, I, if, it, if I was Josh personally, but I know, listen, there's different things, there's contract agreements and all that, but I would have moved up after he became undisputed, you know what I mean? Because I know how big he is at that weight and how much that weight takes out of my day, you know? But uh, his last two performances, as you say, he's probably not had that wee spring in his step, mate, you know what I mean? And last night, he was he looked good for the first three rounds, mate. And then, and again, I, I spoke to him, mate, and then he just sort of felt that he tired a wee bit, mate. And that's no Josh, because he sets the pace, you know what I mean? He's a ferocious fighter. He wears you doing, he breaks you doing the later rounds because he's so fit, he's so strong. So I do think he's maybe just outgrown that weight, mate. But listen... The better man won the night, Nate. Enough, taking nothing away for Teofimo Lopez. He, he fought a fantastic fight. And it was a fantastic fight. It was an elite level fight, mate. I've, I'm trying to explain that to people. This is the elite level. This isn't just world level. This is elite level. You've got two guys who are the, the best operators on the planet going head to head, mate. But um, I congratulations to Teofimo Lopez. But I'm gutted for my bro, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm just, I just want to see him get a good rest, mate, and then move up to 147. I, I I agree, mate. And uh, you, you almost look at the way Josh when I, I put a, a post up and I can it's, it's from I said in my podcast as well and um that it's hard for me, this side of the camera, to sort of be unbiased or sit on the fence with mm -hmm. Josh because I knew Josh long before I started IFL TV. I was friends with Josh long before I started IFL yeah, TV. Yeah. I was friends with Josh long before. So I I'm going to have that little bit of bias and want Josh to do of well. Course, I, I probably won't sit on the fence when it's pro Josh as much as I should, but that, that I, I, I don't really care <laughs> to be honest. And, nah, and that's it, me. Fuck it. All you, all you want. <laughs> but I think that when you look at the way Josh went through that sort of 140 ranks and he, he, he was world champion in 15 fights, unified in 16, undisputed in 18. Um, mm -hmm. The record of his last, what, seven opponents, six opponents was like 133 and zero. Um, the guy's done everything, and I still, yeah, I, I still feel that he doesn't get enough of his dues or the respect that he deserves in what he's mm -hmm. done in such a quick turn. And again, why do you think that is, Aston? If I can ask you bluntly, uh, I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around it as well, mate. Because listen, I've just put our post there, mate. He's the, the best fighter in my opinion that Scotland will ever have and probably the best fight that Britain will ever have in a very long time, probably in my lifetime, mate, and that's my opinion. And, and, I, and people can say I'll be biased or whatever, I don't care. As I've said that before, I don't give a fuck. Mate, he's he's unbelievable, mate. 
Um, I don't know why he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. Right? I can start going, is it because he's got under all that stuff? I just don't know why, mate. But people, I don't want people to forget, mate, what he has done within 16 fights. He's still no a novice pro, but no far off it, mate, if you mm. want to say. You know what I mean? That's not a lot of fights, mate, 16 fights, you know what I mean? To become undisputed champion of the world and then be the best fighter on the planet, basically. That's not a lot of fights, mate, you know what I mean? Some people haven't done that in their full career in 30, 40 fights, you know what I mean? So, I, I don't know why that is, mate, but, listen, just gutted for him, bro, but he'll be all right. He needs some, some good time after his wife and his family, mate, and then it'll be, I'm, I'm sure he'll be back quick to camp this time, mate, because I know what he's like. He'll want to correct mm-hmm. this, mate, and get it right, and then move up with it. Obviously, the one four seven pound division right now is uh, is is got Spence and Crawford. Now mm-hmm. we talk about the undisputed. Obviously, Josh stuck around at one forty, but if you look at guys like Usyk, when he became undisputed at cruiserweight, he went up, he vacated and went up to heavyweight. Yep. Inui, when he became undisputed down at bantamweight, he vacated, moved up to super bantamweight. Aye. Now the sort of ideal scenario is Spence Crawford fight. One of them wins, whoever it may be, comes undisputed, vacate the belts. And then Aye. it's sort of like the the the, the plan, the, the the wishful thinking that me and you have in our heads that he managed to fight for one of them vacant titles and becomes a two weight world champion. Aye, mate, that 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 or I love I love that fight with Spencer Crawford. Listen, mm-hmm. I know people have got to, got to go. Oh, he's just jumping up to well. Uh, I don't care, mate. I know how good this guy is, mate. And that extra seven pounds mm-hmm. it will show. And again, mate, that's a big financial fight. Know what I mean? And Josh is obviously he's a prize fighter now, mate. He's he's fighting for he's fighting for serious money, mate, and he's fighting for the security of himself and his family, know what I mean, mate. So whatever financially makes sense, I think he'll go away as well. But I love that Terence Crawford and El Spence fight. But again, he might have one before that, or they might vacate the belts, as you said, and he could fight for one of the belts. Mm-hmm. I don't know the way it works, mate, but I just hope that he well, I sort of know, know what I mean, that he'll go up to one for seven now. And I believe he'll be a world champion at 147 pounds, not a problem. We we spoke a little bit about again before I pushed record there that the sort of losing a fight is you can lose a fight, right? And it, people are down in the dumps mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But but Josh, especially in he, us in Scotland, that we've only had generational one generational fighter. It can go back to uh-huh. Ken Buchanan, then it was Jim Watt. Then you can probably say a couple of fighters. Then it was Scott Harrison. Then it was Alex Arthur. Then it was Ricky Burns. Then it was Josh Taylor. So we've only ever had that one fighter carrying the whole weight of Scottish boxing on their shoulders. Guys that are bringing the, the hydro, sound the hydro, getting all the young fighters on the undercard. Mm-hmm. We've only ever had that one fighter. Now, Josh has lost. Uh, do you feel like the sort of press, maybe the press, uh, pressure sort of, released off him a little bit like I've lost the, the O's gone who cares let mm-hmm. me, I've, I've done everything I can at 140 let me make an assault at 147 aye I think so mate I think listen the guy was let's not beat about the bush the guy was definitely carrying the weight of the country on his shoulders you know what I mean um, undefeated champion undisputed never been beat never lost how lost any rounds all that stuff mate you know what I mean that's a lot of pressure we're only human Andy you know what I mean and he's only human at the end of the day I can sit and say that to him right now, but I, I know it won't make him feel any better because I know he's just a winner. You know mm. what I mean? And he doesn't take... He won't take defeat easily, mate. You know what I mean? But I think the pressure will be off his shoulders a wee bit, mate, and he can make that decision now to go, listen, I'm going to move up weight and I'm going to start something new. You know what I mean? I'm trying to become a two-weight world champion because I do think there was all that, like, you're going to move up, you're going to stay 140. His, his mind was caught in between two things, mate. And I think this is a good deal now. I think he'll, he'll move up to 147, mate, and his mind will be focused on that, Andy, you know what I mean? Definitely. And it's it's one of them ones where it's, I I mean, you, like you said, Josh is a winner. He'll, 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 he'll he, he want, he, we know that he wants Jack Carroll. And he said that he wants mm-hmm. Teofimo Lopez again. He, he doesn't like sitting on them losses where he doesn't want the rematch. Do uh, uh, you know what I mean? And we've seen it when... Uh, uh, going back to like Delhi in 2010 when he won the silver medal, we nearly launched his silver medal away. Do you know what I mean? So he, that's I know, I know, I know. how much of a winner he is. But he always wants to write that wrong. Um, yep. So this is just going to set a fire under Josh. And obviously, if he does go up to 147, this is going to give him that hunger again. And like I said, he's not the champion. He's not being chased anymore. 
he's back yes. to the challenger and he's going to do the chase. And I think that's when Josh maybe is more comfortable as being that guy, the hungry guy, looking up and saying, I want him. Do you know what I mean? Definitely, mate. Definitely. Because even before this, mate, he would speak about, I want to be a two-bit world champion, you know what I mean? But he's fighting at 140 and now he's got, he can put that behind him, mate, you know what I mean? As you say, doesn't he pressure on his shoulders now? You know what I mean? He's going up to 147 and as you say, chase, chase world titles at that weight, mate, you know what I mean? Um, and that's, that'll be exciting for him. Maybe he needs something exciting back in his career, mate, you know what I mean? I don't know how it feels to be undisputed champion of the world. I can only wish, mate, you know what I mean? But I'm guessing when you've done it, you've beat everybody, mate. You've got to the belts and then you get people talking shit about you. Know, you might lose a wee bit of excitement, mate. I don't know. Um, but it'll be good to see him up at 147, mate, and, and getting that bit about his teeth again, mate, and that extra seven pounds on him, mate, because I know the 140 is not easy for him, mate. He's fucking huge, mate. He walks about the same size as me. He's a big guy, mate, you know what I mean? So, listen... It's exciting times for him, mate. Not I me, mean, even though in defeat, mate. It's exciting times, mate. He's still one loss, mate. Not I mean, Tia Fimo's been beat before. Not I mean, it's not as if you could beat after undefeated fighter, mate. He's got one one blemish on his career, mate. But what does that mean? Nothing. Exactly. Not when you you you've achieved as what jo- Josh. One quick one for me as well. Obviously, sixteen months out the ring. I know Josh is isn't. Josh is one of them guys where he said that the layoff wasn't a problem. That's nothing to do with it. He said that he doesn't believe in ring rust. But mm-hmm. for me, I, I don't believe. I don't know if I believe in ring rust myself. But I still believe that even though you're getting high quality sparring, it, it, it still doesn't compare to small gloves, no head guards, thousands of people watching in the arena, millions of watching on TV. The the ring walk. Nothing compares to that. So obviously, Josh hasn't made that as an excuse and fair play to him. But do you mm-hmm. think maybe the 16 months layoff has played a little part in that? I think so, mate. I think so. And as you said, Josh will never, Josh will never ever make an excuse. Not I mean, he even said it in the interviews after it. He says, listen, we're making any excuses. The better man won the night. Not I mean, and I respect him for that. And I think everybody respects him for that. He'll never ever make an excuse, mate. But I do think the layoff might have played a wee part in it. Not I mean. I think Josh is a very active fighter. He likes to be active. He likes to be fighting all the time. You know what I mean? That's just the way he, he fights and he, and he likes to approach things. Um, the layoff maybe didn't do him much good, but that was just life, mate, on life's terms, wasn't it? There's nothing that could have been done about that. But now he's got the ball rolling again, mate. Let's get him back in the gym. Let's obviously get let him have some time off, obviously, with his family, and then hopefully see him back in the gym quickly, mate. You know what I mean? Getting back out again. You know what I mean? Because I want to see him getting that good run because I enjoy watching them. You know what I mean? I don't like seeing them going missing for too long. What what I will say is again being being a, a, a selfish jock and the biased jock that I am, um he's done he's done he's done Vegas, he's done Madison Square Garden. Let's let's keep oh, it in man. the hydro. Let's keep it in the hydro and bring the big knights back to Scotland. Aye. I think so, mate. I think and I think that's <laughs> what he'll be aiming for. It could be the hydro, Easter Road maybe. You no, know I mean I know he wants to do one in Edinburgh. Um that's on the, the wish list, you know what I mean? But listen, a guy who pressed in pans, mate, right? Who didn't come for much, who has headlined in Las Vegas and headlined in MSG, mate. Dreams can come true, bro. You know what I mean? If you believe it, mate, and you can certainly achieve it, and that guy has done it, mate. I take my hat off to him, man. So da, mate. So da. Listen, Aston, obviously, I said to you, generational fighters, we have one in Scotland, man. Do you think we'll ever see a time that we're going to have maybe two, three world champions consecutively, which means the pressure is sort of like half off the one guy carrying that weight of Scottish boxing on their shoulders? Aye, very soon, mate, me. (laughs) (laughs) That's the fucking answer. That's the answer. That's the answer I wanted. Nah, listen, mate, do you know what? I'm on my way. Well, I'm on the road to that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, what I mean, with all my hard work and determination, I'll get there, mate. But listen, Will we see a fighter like Josh Taylor again? Probably no, mate. No in my lifetime anyway. Definitely. Well, listen, Aston, thank you so much for taking time out your your Sunday to get a chat no, with No, not you. a problem, uh, mate. Listen, we've both got it for Josh, but no doubt we know him very well that he's going to take this, he's going to set a fire under his feet and he's going to get going mm-hmm. again and, uh, listen, get back to where he, where, where he belongs. And Aston, like I said, thank you so much, brother. I'll give you a message throughout the week to try and get Aye. this unorganised, all right? So, listen, no Aston, worries, Andy. Thank you, thank you so thank much, you, brother. Thank you, Speak to you soon, bro. Cheers, man. Bye. Bye, mate. Because I refuse to not be first.
Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shut up, Harry. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 